you know, subsidiary A in, in country A, country A, country A. If you need financing, who is directing you? The head office. If you need capital expenditure, you want to buy a plant, you need money, you want to arrange money, and you need direction from head office. Similarly, with this B part, if your subsidiary is in B country still, you are waiting the decisions from a centralized body because we are studying finance. So the centralized body is financial managers of the parent company. Understand? Yep. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And what do we mean by decentralized? We do not need any centralized body who can direct us, who can, you know, dictate us what we need to do or what we, you know, what kind of policy we need to opt. So we just decentralize or we can make or we can give autonomy to the country A's financial managers. If country A, some kind of thing, cash management is needed, you are, you have the right to make cash management decisions. You have the right to make inventory decisions. You have the right to make financing decisions, capital decisions, right? So there are parent company who give the rights, how the company is going to be run through finances or through financial managers. The financial managers has the authority to take financial decisions in that country. For B, we have their own financial managers. Understand? Yep. Yes. So now we are officially, officially starting our chapter two, which is international flow of funds. So chapter one is basically, you know, is sharing the lights of international financial environment, which I just explained to you. It's not like more than four to five pages. So I just skipped I hope that. all that. But you already know that. Yes, David. I hope you all the other chapters. Oh, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Uh, all I'm saying, I hope all the other chapters are going to be this uh, simple. That's my job to make it simple. Your job is just to understand and participate if you don't understand. That's it. So, okay. <laughs> okay. So don't worry about that. Yeah. Make this easy. That is my job. So don't worry about that. The, the, the topic name or the... The subject name looks very scary, international finance. What is gonna be like include international flow of funds like that. So don't worry about that, okay? When we <laughs> are attending the classes, we are discussing it with each other, then we really understand these are just uh, jargon of a subject. Every subject has its own language. So it looks scary, but it's not, okay? So we are starting yes. chapter two, and in which we learn these kind of objectives will share some lights on these questions. Explain the key components of balance of payments. Explain the growth in, in international trade activity over time. Explain how international trade flows are uh, influenced by economic factors and other factors. Explain how international capital flows are uh, influenced. I cannot see, oh, influenced by country characteristics and introduce the agencies that facilitate the international flow of funds. So most of the thing that we will discuss here, you already know through news, through surfing internet, through discussing in your, you know, colleagues, peers, classmates, or into, you know, bumping up into some other sites or videos or in, in movies, you already know this kind of stuff. But today we will learn about that, what they actually mean and how they are used. Let's talk about what is balance of payment. So balance of payments, it is a summary of transaction between domestic and foreign residents for a specific country over a specific period of time. So it means balance of payment, this term is used for country. Domestic means like residents of the country. Foreign residents, like those persons who are not national of the country, they are just living over there for doing the job or you are 
you know, you are people going to China for study, right? So you will, that's why we call that foreign residents. And over a specific period of time, for example, one year balance of payment, three months balance of payment, right? So similarly, we are, you know, touching this concept with respect to accounting. Like accounting, we have profit and loss, balance sheet. So same is with the country as well. At the end of the year, we have to make a balance of payment statement for a country. So the components of balance of payment, current account and capital account. So current account means summary of flows of funds uh, okay. due to purchases of goods or services or the provision of income on financial assets. And capital account means summary of flow of funds resulting from the sale of assets between one specific country to all countries over a specific period of time. So current account, if you already know the accounting, so current means whose life is less than or equal to one year. So all those things that we are settling between countries to countries and the time period is less than one year or one year, we call the, we will taking those transactions into current account. Capital account, if a country is selling its assets, for example, electricity department, for example, US is selling its electricity department to Russia or China or Japan, or Bangladesh is selling its railway, national railway to Japan. So we call this capital account. So in some countries, there's a word we call this privatization. You heard this concept, right? In which the country is selling its national assets, airline, electricity, natural gas, petroleum, banking, right? Universities or schools, right? So these kind of things to some private outsider countries, right? So all these transactions, yeah. they come under capital account, right? So balance of payment means, uh, balance of payment consists of two accounts. Number one is current account and number two is capital account. In current account, we talk about imports, exports, right? We sell goods to others. We buy goods from others, right? These kind of things. And also, what do we mean by provision of income on financial assets? We will learn in, in our next slide as well. And then capital account. So capi uh, okay. Capital means whose life is for more than one year, right? So all those, the, all those assets a country has, for example, railway, electricity, they are their, their life is for more than one year. So they are assets, fixed assets, right? More than one year. When its sale or purchase is done, then we call it capital account. And normally its payments are not settled in one year because it's huge, billions of dollars. So these are done in, in installments. For example, first installment is gonna be 2020. Next installment is gonna be in 2021. And then, the loss is going to be in 2025, right? So that's why we call this capital account. Understand? So let's share some light on current account. Before that, I have a very nice video to show you. And let's learn about that. I hope it is. Not is it? Describing what you just described, the video. It is more than that. Oh. Okay, here. Can you hear? Yes. Trade is the difference between a country imports and exports. A trade deficit occurs when a country buys or imports more goods from other countries than it sells or exports. The expenses going out of the country for imports is greater than the income coming in from exports, while a trade deficit 
could be an indication of less revenue being generated and hence resulting in a lower standard of living in the economy, it could also be a sign of economic expansion. When a country is going through an expansionary stage of its business cycle, aggregate income increases, which can trigger a rise in the demand for imported goods or services. A balance of trade deficit is favorable for domestic consumers as they enjoy a greater selection of goods and services at competing and lower prices. A trade surplus occurs when a country sells more than it buys from foreign markets. This means that the revenue coming into the country from exports is greater than the payments going out for imports. More revenue usually leads to a rise in employment and wages, which is prosperous for any economy. A surplus may also arise when an economy's business cycle is in a contracting stage. In this stage, aggregate income <laughs> increases, leading to a subsequent decline in the demand for imported goods. If exports remain unchanged, a surplus emerges. A balance of trade surplus <laughs> is favorable for a country's domestic producers, as they generate higher sales, more revenue, and increased profits. When combined into a single figure, an economy's trade transactions paint a useful picture of overall trade activity, helping investors identify trends. Did you get some new information? Yeah. Sir? It's pretty much what, we, what you taught us in micro. Sir? That is in macro, not micro. Oh, in macro, sorry. <clears throat> okay. So. Yeah, Jackie, we can hear you. Sir, I wanted to ask you: Are you going to upload this PPT on Blackboard? Yes. Yes, I will be uploading his PPTs, the uh, or these lectures as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so the current account it consists of three sub account. Number one is payments for merchandise and services. Number two, factor income payments. And number three, transfer payments. So payments for merchandise and service, we also call this balance of trade, which we just learned from our video. So it means merchandises, merchandise exports and imports, which represent tangible products that are trans transported between countries. And also service export and imports, which represents tourism and other services. <clears throat> so the difference between exports and imports is referred to as balance of trade, right? So if the balance of trade is positive, it means it is surplus. If negative, it means it is deficit. So if exports are greater than imports, we have surplus, surplus, which is good. Why? Because then the country will be having more income and standard of living will be higher. Right? Up till now, I'm just going to tell you, you just remember that if you sell more, you receive more and you enjoy more standard of living, right? Rest of the things we will be learning in our coming lectures. If imports greater than exports, then there is deficit. Deficit it means you are spending more and you are earning less. And when you are earning less, you are paying more, that is not good. It means your standard of living will be decreased. Okay, factor income, which means you, a country bought some kind of, or shares in other countries stock market. Sorry. So it represents income in the form of interest income or dividend income received by investor on foreign investments in financial assets, securities. If China has invested or China give loan to the US 